For serious YouTubers, save time and money with TubeBuddy, the premier tool used at geekoutdoors.com. Get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. Hey, welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. Now on a previous video, I showed you how to install the most recent version of OpenShot and also how to actually create your very first video project, a very simple one where you would just put some clips together and also add a few transitions. Now on this particular episode, I'm gonna be talking about titles, animated titles, and also video overlays. But if you haven't seen the original video, be sure to check that out in the description area below. And so one of the things that people like to do is they like to add titles and for I guess more special titles, there's also animated titles and they also like to do video overlays. Now in OpenShot, you can do all of those things. And the first thing is with the animated titles itself because in order to do animated titles, uh, it will use a different program outside of OpenShot, it'll actually use Blender. And so if you go here to title and animated title, if you try to use any of these animated titles, it will automatically tell you that you need to you have the latest version of Blender 2.78 or greater. And so what Blender is, is primarily a 3D graphics tool, a design tool. So how you would normally find that is you would go to administration, software manager, you would type that in, your password. And the thing is the version of Blender, and you can just type in Blender here. The thing is the, ter the version of Blender that's actually on your software manager or in the repositories is actually not the most recent version. It's actually 2.76 and the program to do the animated titles requires 2.78 or greater. And so how do you fix that? Okay. Well, there are a few ways, but this is the way that I recommend you do it. Okay. And so if you actually go to Blender's website, uh, you can actually uh, get the latest version. Okay. Uh, no. If I could spell, Okay, so you go to blender.org and here you could actually download the latest version by just going to the downloads and then if you click on download it'll recognize that it is Linux, the version of Linux that you're running or you could choose it manually. Okay, it's about a 128 meg file and whenever you download it you will have it in your download folder and then you could extract it. Okay, and so once you extract it there'll be a folder. And inside this folder, here's the actual program itself. Okay, so this is probably not similar to how you would normally install it, but that's, I think, the easiest way. Okay, now there is another way, and this is often the way that's most recommended to get the latest versions uh, that are not in the repositories, is to add the uh, PPA. Unfortunately, there's not an official uh, PPA for Blender, as far as I know. You can add one from this person called uh, Thomas Schmilix, uh, Schilix. I don't know if I said that correctly. But um, I think that's a little more uh, complicated, I would say. or And maybe not the fact that it's complicated. It's just that this is not from the official repositories from Blender. So that's why I'm not going to show you this, okay? So I'm going to focus on the this method right here where you would change the path to where you extracted it, okay? And so here I've extracted to my home directory and here under the Blender folder, I wanted to point to this, okay? So what this means is if you go back to OpenShot, if you go to Edit Preferences, see these are actually the programs, uh, the path that it's gonna run. So Blender and Inkscape, it knows the default path that these are installed in, okay? But I don't want it to go to those paths, okay? So I've already have Blender installed. If you go here to, let me see, where do I have it at? I think I might have it under sound and video, or maybe not, let me see, graphics, yeah. See, I already have Blender here, but this is the old version, okay? So when you install it from the software manager or repositories, it'll put it right here, okay? But that's not the version I wanna use. I wanna use the most recent version. So what that means is you're gonna have to change the path to this, okay? And so the way you do that, is um, you know obviously you know where it is but how do you you know how do you tell the program where it is okay so so it's actually this folder right here okay so all you would do is just go into the folder okay and then you know you want the whole path to this okay but you want the 
long uh, path name, the exact path name instead of some type of a shortcut. Okay, so you would just type in PWD, which will show you the current working directory, and just copy this. Okay, just copy that entire directory. Come back here to your program, paste it, and then uh, put a forward slash right here. Okay, because that's saying, hey, inside this folder there is an executable Blender. Okay, and you could close that. Now, if you go to your title, animated title, you should be able to click on something and now you'll be able to see a preview. So that means it's pointing to the right directory where the most recent version of Blender is. Okay, now here's the thing. This actually takes quite a while for it to render, but I really wanted to show this to you first because it's probably going to be, I guess, the most complex setup out of everything else you have to do in Blender in terms of setup. Okay, so let's, uh, the thing is it has to render this whole thing out. Okay, so you'll see what I mean by that. It actually has to produce each frame. So here, you put whatever title you want, because right now it's default my title. Let's just say awesome video or awesome movie. Let's just say that. Okay, and you can leave the rest of these the same. You could change this file name if you want. Okay, uh, let's just call it movie uh, title. Okay, and just go ahead and render. And I will say, even on a very fast machine, it takes a while to render. So what I'll do is I'll come back to this once it finishes rendering. Okay, so once the title is actually finished rendering or the animated title, you'll see it right here in your project. So what I recommend is, since it took so long to render, be sure to save your project so you don't have to do that again. And let's see how that looks. So I'm going to bring this movie title right here, okay, on its own track. And so if you were to actually play this track, see, there it is. There is your new animated title. It looks pretty good you know and that's actually one thing that I really like about OpenShot although it's a very simple tool it does offer a better visual representation and these things they are not available in Kdenlive Live by default so I really like that they give that to you okay that it's already available and you know you don't have to do anything special except that uh, initial uh, setup that I just showed you so that's really cool. So and check it out it overlays over the actual video. And then I'm going to be talking about video overlays here in a second. So that's how you would create animated titles. And if you saw there under animated titles, um, I don't know if you saw it, but you could even change the font alignment. And there's so many things you could do. See right here. There's a lot of different, uh, you know, features or uh, different types of styles you could put on your actual animated title. So that's really, I think, a great feature if you want to add a little more uh, animation <laughs> to your titles you know pun intended okay but what if you just want very simple titles you know with text and stuff and, and not have it be animated well you could do that as well so let's go ahead and move these around a little bit okay and that's why I you know I really enjoy open shot uh, because you could do a lot of cool stuff and it doesn't take long you know, and at the same time, it's not complex. That's the most important thing because a lot of video editing tools, they're pretty complex. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the project timeline. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a title. Okay. So here you could choose title. And right here, you know, OpenShot has already provided you with a lot of default titles as well. Okay. Different designs, different styles. A different positioning of it you know and like I said, it's very easy for you to change things okay so with the whole theme of movies let's go ahead and add this one and let me see what should I call this uh, let's just say I don't know I'm, I'm not gonna change this okay so <laughs> let's just go ahead and save it this movie is rated R for rad <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and bring this down here okay so I want to put this right before the actual video starts okay so see it just shows right up very simple but also you could make it you know a little nicer you could have it fade in you know if you right click on your mouse um, on the actual clip itself you see there's other options okay there's even keyframing here but just to keep things simple uh, let's go ahead and do a fade okay so a start of clip you know and you could play around with this you know and just do that okay and there's also different types of animations as well but let's let's start with fade first 
fade in fast, fade in slow. Let's go ahead and fade in fast. Okay. So let's see how that looks. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. But, you know, you could also uh, remove that as well or actually change it. Okay. And let me see if I could remove the previous one. Oh, that's okay. You could always, like, undo stuff as well. Okay. So it's not a big deal. Let's see how that looks. Ooh, I'm going to have two different fades. No, sweet. So very simple. And just like the other thing that you could do, you know, you could actually change uh, the actual, you know, title that you have on there and the text, which is really cool. But, you know, very easy. And you could move things around, okay, as well. So nice features and easy way for you to add titles. And if you notice on the titles itself, um, you could actually, you know, add different types of font as well. See, so it gives you a lot of flexibility. And I do love the title, as I mentioned earlier, I do love the title, um, animated title and the transition effects, uh, you know, interface way more than I do Caden Lives. I wish Caden Live had, you know, a very nice GUI interface like this. Okay, uh, because doing things like this which seems simple here it's pretty it's a pain to do in Caden Live I'm not gonna lie to you you know so if Caden Live has something like this it would be extremely awesome okay so that is simply how you would add animated titles and also regular titles as well so now let's talk about video overlays okay so what is overlay mean okay well what that means is say for example uh, you actually wanted to put another video right but you want it in like a small box okay because right now if I did add another video let's let's give you an example we'll use the same exact video clips okay so say for example I wanted to add a clip at the beginning of this clip as well while this clip is playing okay so I want to add this clip right and so if you did this right now and you press play well the one on top it's on top so it'll go above this particular video you know and that's not what I really wanted I want both videos to play but this one to be smaller okay so if you right click on the clip you could use what's called transform okay and just click on that and now you could easily transform the size of this you know really easy to do and uh, once again way easier to do than Caden live you know and <laughs> I might be sound like I'm bashing Caden Live, but I really, I really love the ease of use and open shot. But I love the power of Caden Live, so I kind of wish Caden uh, Live had both, <laughs> so that I don't have to move around. So I forgot you could also increase the size of this, which makes it a lot easier to see. So um, let's go and see how this looks. Okay, so check that out. You know, it's really awesome, and. Uh, if you notice, you can also change where uh, it actually starts overlaying itself, okay? And so, or actually where it starts transforming, okay? And so right now, I didn't start to transform until like later on in the clip, okay? But you could see how that would work. Like if I deleted this, uh, I could actually start to transform a lot earlier, okay? And there's other things that you could do. You could also do keyframing as well um, that basically tells the program when you could start changing things okay um, and you, that gets into more complex stuff and we might go over that in a future episode but um, that's how you do very simple overlays okay and so you know, a lot of people might like to do this when uh, maybe they're doing like uh, footage you know like they want to show different footage like or gameplay footage and they want to have an overlay of themselves on there okay so and also you know obviously you could also cut things out right here as well you know and then you could remove that that clip so you can remove that and then you could also do things such as like fade out you know and the clip let's fade out slow so let's see how that looks boom all right looking good and then all of a sudden yes fades out awesome another one comes in so let's kind of combine uh, all of these things together, okay? So, and like I said, 
um, in previous the previous video. This is really for general simple editing, okay? Um, and in later videos, I might do uh, some more, uh, I guess, complex uh, editing as well. So, but you know, complex is really relative. But this is real general, okay? Very easy to use. And so let's go ahead and put this at the beginning, okay? And I'm gonna have this. Let's just have it animate, okay? Start a clip. Uh, let's just do zoom in, all right? Let's fit, okay. And then on top of that, I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, this uh, movie title. Overlay this clip. Okay, so this is gonna be pretty horrible. <laughs> uh, probably not gonna win an Oscar, but uh, I just wanted to show you to you. And, and it also has a transition as well right here. This is the uh, transition effect right here. And then, uh, yeah, so who knows? We could maybe do mm, end of clip. Ah, that's fine. Um, and also, uh, there are default layouts as well. So if you don't want to physically transform or resize the clip, you can also use these default ones. Let me show you how that works, okay? So let's go ahead and put this right here, okay? And then right-click layout. Let's put that on the top left. Let's go ahead and save this. Start all, all over from the beginning. Let's press play. Boom, zooms in. That's the first clip. Wow, it's already going to be in a, a blockbuster film. Yes. And then after that, the clip comes in with the overlay. Okay. And then uh, once we transition to the next one, you're going to see the animated title along with a transition of the second video for the awesome movie yes and then finally see a default overlay okay so you know there's lots of things that you could do here and obviously this isn't uh, super professional so that's it for this particular episode I think just by these you know knowing these things alone uh, will give you a lot of I would say knowledge in creating your own videos with some pretty cool pretty cool effects you know very easy to do and once again you know that's a credit to the developers who created OpenShot okay this is a, a fantastic video tool now um, I do want to mention one thing that uh, I didn't mention on last video um, if you do want to support uh, these developers you know be sure to go to their website you could actually uh, donate to them so um, I just want to mention that because uh, you know I use a lot of different open source tools and you know being a content creator myself you know it's not free uh, you know they, they actually have to make a living as well and so if y'all wanted to you know come here to the website and make a donation through PayPal I've done this before for various programs specifically open shot programs that I like and so it really helps them out and allows them to create you know keep creating more awesome tools okay so um, that's it for this particular episode if you had any thoughts on OpenShot or any of the things that I talked about in this episode, be sure to leave it in the comments area below. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, leave a like and subscribe. And if you wanted to support my channel further, you could do that at patreon.com forward slash geek outdoors. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com and I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.